certainly along the base there. Okay, so you can see how that's starting to form now, um, a, a mountain range. It's getting some beautiful light up in through here. Um, probably we could replicate a little bit of that a bit more over on this side. And that was just the cadmium yellow, really, is what we were using there. So let's grab a little bit more cadmium yellow and touch a titanium white into it there, not that much. You want to make things like sunlight. Um, yellow into the white is a good way of really capturing that sunlight. Now I'm just going to be very subtle here. Yeah, the um, cadmium yellow into the mix is a great way to capture the light and to really brighten it up. But of course, you've always got to have that contrasting against your darks. Get not a nice sunlight into that valley there. Okay. A little bit more white. So I'm just mixing up a few different varieties of tone here. Um, It looks like there's some trees that have been cleared there. Um, oh, I just saw a spot that I wanted to work on. Maybe that spot right there. Just darken that out through there. Okay. So I do like the way we've got a bit more purple coming through in there. Um, and I think it's starting to work. Now I'm spending a little bit of time on this because I think this is really um, one of the key sort of features of this painting that we're doing today is this background mountain. We're going to create an effect of a gate, you know, um, that you might find in an old sort of farm area. Just start to knock some of that back in there like so. So that's starting to come together quite nicely. You can almost imagine what a bushfire would be like coming up over the um, side of the hill there, having grown up in the bush area, or it was the bush anyway when I grew up there. Um, it's probably now considered to be one of the suburbs of Melbourne, but the threat of bushfires was always prevalent and um, something you always thought about every summer. And this was the sort of hills that I lived in, the Dandenong Ranges. Um, you'd look across and you'd see the light catching on the different parts of the hills and things. So we've got a nice balance of uh, dark against light. Um, I'm not happy with that spot where I put on where I put on this white up here. Just going to knock that back, a bit more yellow acre into it. So, okay, and I'm not really happy with this part in here, the, the field that I was trying to create. So what I think we'll do, just to save ourselves any more mucking around with it, go and mix up a dark ultramarine blue and that purple, and, um, and we'll get a bit of green into that as well, a bit of yellow ochre. Okay, so this is our dark mix. And we'll just darken that out through there. Okay, so I've just put the dark paint on. Now I need to pull it out of my brush. And now just go back in and just soften that back in with the paint that's already there. So wherever you see big blotches of paint, I'm just tapping that in. Now that's a little bit flat. See, I've just created a sort of a flat dead area. And it's a little bit too yellow compared to that, that purple area there. Okay, so what I'll do is I'll just come in with some more purple. 
I'll leave a bit of a gap and I'll leave that sort of green line through there so it's not joining up with there but we'll go with a bit more purple to match the other side there okay and I'll just dry the brush again and then just tap that in And then I'll just stand back and reassess that. Okay, the one thing that's really sort of standing out to me now is this mountain looks just a little bit too far away. So I'm gonna pick up a little bit more ultramarine blue and just darken the value with that. It's hiding too much against the um, the sky. It's too light a value. And it's, you know, with this now being quite strong, um, it's just pushed it way too far back. So we'll just come in there like so. That just strengthens it up a little bit. Okay, we don't pick up that underpaint there. Okay, very good. Now, we'll come forward some fields into here. Um, put a big lot of trees up into here. In fact, why don't we do that next? Okay, so, okay, so what I'm doing now is I'm mixing up a nice dark to paint in the undergrowth there of the tree that we're going to put in, um, which will be a bit of a gum tree sort of effect. Ultramarine blue, bit of that purple, bit of cadmium red, and burnt sienna. We mix all that together, will give us a nice dark. Um, don't want it to be too much on the purple side, we want to head it towards um, being a bit of a, you know, almost a black colour. So a bit of burnt sienna and a bit of red in there. We'll, um, Certainly do the trick for us. Mixing up a fairly decent pile of it. And come back in with our two inch brush again. Just gonna get the edge of it now with the paint. Not, not sort of the whole lot of the brush there. And the tree's gonna come in through, you know, sort of in through here. So we'll sort of get that part of it in up to about there. Um, okay. And in fact, I might go to a smaller brush. I'll go to my one inch brush for the top part of the tree. Load that up, just dab it into the paint there. And um, we want to do like a gum tree sort of effect. So we'll uh, create lots of um, foliage areas there. Paint that in. That's obviously where the gum tree is going to be at its thickest there. Okay, and by putting this tree in here, we're going to obviously push back um, the other mountains. I'll go over that mountain a little bit, and again, that's going to push that mountain right back for us. Um, we probably have some other bushes and things that are coming up through there. Okay. out some of that paint in there so we want the dark so that when we put the light on um, it'll create a nice contrast against the dark okay now in just a couple of spots here in fact um, I'll take a bit of paper towel and I'll just wipe out a little bit there a little bit through there so I don't have as thick a paint to deal with just in through there okay 
taking the same mix now, and this is going to be further away. Um, but let's get a bit of a, a bit of a tree happening up in here as well. Get that nice umbrella shape that you'll um, find with the gum trees. Okay. In this base here, I'm just working it in. We'll put some lower lying um, shrubs and things like that in there as well. So that'll be good. Now I'll go for another one inch brush now. I'm going for my pastry brush this time. I'm going for yellow ochre and titanium white. Mix up a nice light there, just a touch of red into it to make it glow a little bit more. Touch of yellow as well. Okay, this paint's getting a little bit thick, so I'll just pinch a little bit of uh, thinner. Okay, and I'll start working this into here. So we create a bit of a field effect in there. Okay. Now I do feel as though I need to roll this down into the uh, valley a bit more. So we will do that. What I'm doing now is just darkening up this mix a little bit. So as we come forward, we get a bit darker, a bit darker up in the corner, uh, the edge of the painting there. Okay, up underneath there. Pull some of that dark out as a shadow. Um, you know, so you can always just pop in underneath where the wet paint is there and just pull some of it out, creating a bit of a shadow sort of effect. Okay, and as I come in towards the front of the picture, I'm now putting in burnt sienna into the mix just to add a bit of warmer colour into the foreground here. So we've got that transition as we come forward. Okay, and go into, probably almost go into pure burnt sienna at this point. Sort of good earthy colour for Australian scenes. Getting a bit of red into it now. Paint is certainly drying off here. brush off. I'll stand back and have a look. You can see I've left a little bit of a lake <laughs> like effect happening up there. That's okay. We'll just pop in with some yellow ochre, a bit of titanium white. In there. And I can cover that up with some more bushes, that spot that I've left if I wanted to. And what I'll do is I'll take some yellow ochre and I'll just get some of that into there just to knock the effect or the strength of that back a bit. Particularly along this line here. Let's need a bit more gradual transition there. Hopefully you could see what I just did then. Okay. Good, good. So now what we'll do is we'll mix up a... Um, a green. We're using our burnt uh, ultramarine blue and our uh, yellow ochre and we just get a mid value to cover over all of this. So ultramarine blue, yellow ochre, okay and then where we've got these uh, Bushes here, we'll just come in 
and tap in some of that green. Just brighten it up a little bit. And the top's there at least. Now whatever you do, don't lose those darks. Because those darks help you to tell a story. Now if the brush gets cluggy, what you want to do is tap it out. Open up those hairs again. You know, don't um, try and apply it if the brush is all clogged up because then you'll end up with big globs of paint but it won't necessarily be the look that you're after. Now this is our mid-tone that we're putting on here. Um, not our highlight colour, so just keep that in mind. You, you might be wondering if the light's coming that way, why are we putting the highlights on here? Well, this isn't the highlights, this is just a mid-tone. Okay. Leaving a little bit of that light at the back there creep through. I think that's important. And let's go over and have a look at our other side over here. Which will be getting the light, but we'll put the light on shortly. Okay, this, this tree is sort of more off in the distance. Again, don't lose those. Don't lose the darks, but don't be afraid to put some little indications of foliage. Just tap that one out a bit in that one. Don't be afraid to put little indications of foliage out on their own as well. We want to create you know, the sense that there's air in those trees. Well, they, you know, they, you can, birds could fly through them. That's important. We don't want to just block in colour. Okay. Go a bit thicker in the bottom there so that it contrasts against that mountain that we've got way off in the distance there. Okay. Now, with that done, We'll go to our um, liner brush, the little one that I've got there. Um, we'll get that into plenty of plenty of the uh, thinner. We want this to be quite loose. Going into that dark that we mixed up before we put the trees in. Okay. I want this to be quite loose. This paint, and let's just start to um, put in some tree trunks, which we'll highlight, obviously. Okay, Probably losing those a little bit against the backdrop because it's the same colour. So I'll just add a little bit of a little bit of burnt sienna to it. Get a bit more brown in there. Oop, now my brush has got all clogged up again. top here, they're going to be thinner, these branches, obviously. Okay. It's probably better to go more pure burnt sienna in here, I think. Just wherever you think those branches would be to support that canopy of trees. It's probably going to be more another mean through here as well. And through there. Okay, so I started to get that canopy of trees happening there, which is good. Do the same over on this side. This is a slightly further away, so we're going to be a bit more delicate with what we're doing here. Like so. I'm going to go to an even thinner 
script liner brush now um, and I'll just get that into the thinner and there might be you know one or two places here where these twigs sort of come out like so and above the tree just really subtle we're not um, trying to overdo that at all but you will find that a few thinner ones in there okay so we're taking a bit of time with this we want to get it you know today's painting we want it to look like a real sort of Aussie bush scene and um, you know one of the things I've found especially with people who are fans of Bob Ross and Bill Alexander, which of course I am, but you watch them do a painting in 24 minutes and you think, wow, <laughs> you know, that's the time frame that I've got to work with. Well, it's not. Um, take your time. Get your paintings right. Make them look right. Okay. So I'm just mixing up a dark with the green and just, you know, in, so when I say the fields, what I meant really was this um, mountain here, Oop, don't start going in there, just bring it a sense that it rolls down into this valley here that we're in. A bit more like so. And then we can put some bushes and things up in there. <laughs> 